So let's go ahead and start moving into the peptides that find their way into your practice, the ones that you see are most valuable when treating autoimmunity uh, and, and, and how they're used in conjunction and dosed and so on. Let, let's start there. So most of my patients in that, that I would describe like this, if, if we're not talking about the diabetes patient, right. uh, we're <clears throat> talking about what we talked about before, Crohn's disease, other inflammatory conditions. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to probably start with them using a thymosin and or BPC-157. Now we're talking about alpha-1 or beta-4? So I'm going to start with alpha-1. Okay. Um, if I can do all three, I'm going to do all three. If, you know, depending on the patient, these are expensive, as we've talked about. And so if you, if you uh, start with all three, you're talking about a big, big hit. But it's going to be very effective if you start with all three. Mm -hmm. um, most of my patients, because they are multiple chemical sensitive... I'm going to start with very low, probably half the dose that I would normally use on an average patient. And I'm going to start uh, uh, with one thing at a time. So typically I'm going to start with thymosin alpha one because I know I can calm down their uh, immune storm using that. We're going to decrease their inflammatory chemicals. We're going to get their, uh, we're going to get their, their um, uh, dendrites and, and monocytes to stop being this henny penny, the sky is falling chemicals. We're going to get their, their barking dog innate immune system to calm down and, you know, come inside and hang out. And then we can begin to add other things on. I can begin to address their, uh, their intestines. I can begin to address everything else. So I would start with most patients with, with thymus and alpha, thymus alpha one. one. Okay. Right. And depending on the patient, I'm going to start, it's depending on the patient, I'm going to start anywhere from uh, 0.25 to 0.5 or 25 to 50 units on the insulin syringe. Now, now that, that that's coming from TaylorMade Pharmacy. It's already reconstituted. Do you have any idea how many micrograms of, uh, like, like, I remember when we first talked about thymus and alpha one a couple of years ago on the show, uh, it was recommended to take one and a half milligrams every third day if you were fighting a viral infection. In fact, if you're actively fighting a viral infection, I would take it one and a half every day to twice a day. That's mm. the research with the, um, especially with the influenza, is twice a day for five days, and you should see a big, a big drop in your symptoms. We we had so there was someone who listened to my show on thymus and alpha one, uh, and and he had a bad case of uh, herpes zoster breakout mm -hmm. on his face and in his mouth. And the doctor said it was moving towards his eye and he could lose his eye. And um, I told him about thymus and alpha one. He took one and a half milligrams three days in a row and it resolved itself in under a week. And he said, usually when he had those attacks, they lasted months. When we treat, well, the research shows if you even treating animals, we don't see a lethal dose. You can give them tons and tons and tons and, and there's no side effects and there's no lethal dose with with uh, thymus and alpha one, so I feel very safe giving high doses. We uh, we use it in um, uh, mental in uh, stroke patients or traumatic brain injury patients in much higher doses, and we can give it IV. So these are these are very safe to to give even at high doses. Okay, so beta uh, uh, thymus and alpha one, BPC one fifty seven obviously is a, is a great player in anything gut related, right. uh, and, and so. You would have the, your patients take that on a daily basis at a prescribed dose. And how long before those two start to show any signs of, of, uh, of quelling the, the autoimmunity? So it can be as quick as a week. We have an ankylosing spondylitis patient who's gotten significant improvement in her pain within a week. But it does sometimes take six to eight weeks for us to see a benefit. Mm -hmm. And so I'll usually start one, I'll wait a couple of weeks, I'll start a second one, like I'll start thymosin alpha one, I'll wait a couple of weeks, I'll start BPC-157. Most of the time they'll have a side effect by that time just because these are multiple chemical sensitive patients. Average person's not going to have a side effect, but they'll have a local swelling or irritation. I'll drop back, drop the dose, proceed again, increasing the dose over time. Um, and then we'll add in something like thymus and beta-4. So TB4 I love for lots of reasons, for myself, for, for weightlifting, but also for my patients. 
I love it because they, um, this is, TV4 is like the toy box of the train, pieces of train, uh, toy train. And so if you want nutrients and cells healing and, uh, and, and other and chemicals and proteins, signaling proteins to come to your area of damage or disease, you have to have a, a mechanism for them to move. And so TB4 is a, a G actin sequestering, meaning it, it holds onto those pieces of train track for you to use uh, when you need them. Otherwise, they're dispersed and reused as something else. Um, but if you if you have TB4 around, it holds them in place so you can lay down those train tracks to get things quickly back and forth, even mitochondria to create energy for the process of healing requires geactin uh, train tracks to be set. So it's, it has a lot of other signaling properties TB4 does and, and, um, and healing by, by its signaling properties, but its main function is in laying that groundwork for transportation of necessary nutrients and uh, proteins and mitochondria.